Hundreds of cannabis compounds have been discovered, but only a few have received the spotlight they deserve. Researchers have compared several different cannabinoids and found some potential therapeutic benefits of multiple compounds, including CBN. Comparing the differences of CBN versus CBD is an interesting conversation that warrants more research. These two cannabinoids are popular, but they also offer different possible therapeutic benefits. When comparing CBN versus CBD, both might look similar from a molecular standpoint, but they're two very different compounds. When looking at CBN and CBD, both have some similar potential therapeutic properties too. Both of them may offer therapeutic properties in the health and wellness industry for several different issues. Hey, I'm Dale Hewitt, founder of New Phase Blend CBD Company, and today we'll discuss what exactly CBN is, how CBN and CBD are different, and how they work. So what is CBN? Cannabinol, or CBN, is a compound of cannabis, and remember both marijuana and hemp are both cannabis. It's famous for its non-intoxicating properties and remarkable similarity to CBD. CBD is also a cannabinoid. CBN is the byproduct of degrading THC, which simply means when THC ages and decays into an old compound, it turns into CBN. Another term for this is oxidation. So let's talk about CBN and CBD and the oxidation process. Several different cannabinoids in the cannabis plant can oxidize into different compounds depending on their makeup. Oxidation can happen in a few different ways. We'll discuss the two most popular forms, which are light exposure and time. Manufacturers can expose THC rich plants to extreme UV lighting in order to force the oxidation process. Over time, the excess exposure to UV lighting slowly turns the THC into a CBN. The end result is CBN rich products. Check out this picture below of a UV light being used to expose impurities and minerals. You'll notice it uses a bluish spectrum of light, kind of like black lights. Time is also a key factor in oxidation. Over time, THC will degrade and turn into CBN. That means CBN may exist in large amounts in the older plants. Since we can't alter time, unfortunately, people will typically use the UV light method to force the oxidation process. Currently, levels of CBN in cannabis depend on environmental factors instead of genetic factors of the particular strains. For this reason, there are currently no super high CBN strains on the marketplace yet. This is one area that is interesting since there are several high CBD strains that exist. So let's talk about some potential benefits of CBN. CBN, back in 1896, was the first cannabinoid that was actually isolated in its purest form. People actually thought that CBN was responsible for the intoxicating effects of cannabis. Now we know that different forms of THC are in fact responsible for that, not CBN. Originally, CBN was the culprit. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? It's one of the reasons CBN is actually still heavily regulated in areas. It wasn't until later that the researchers showed CBN does not produce intoxicating effects on its own. So when we talk about CBN and CBD, the effects of CBN have not been thoroughly studied in human subjects yet. So keep this in mind when you see products with CBN that make a boatload of medical claims. Sure, they could be true, but there isn't enough scientific evidence to make the claims. That said, let's talk more about the potential benefits of CBN. Cannabinol has shown an ability to induce relaxing effects on the human brain and body. A study published in 2011 made a claim that the combination of THC and CBN could produce a tranquilizing effect in humans. These two compounds are responsible for a large portion of the sedative effects people feel after using cannabis or marijuana products. Aged cannabis products, or those with more exposure to heat and sunlight, showed better results in relaxing the human body. This is primarily because of the amount of THC that has converted to CBN, like we spoke about earlier. The older cannabis products contain higher CBN content, 
which makes them more useful for relieving purposes, or so it seems. Research with CBN is still being conducted and refined on almost a daily basis. Anti-inflammatory and anti-convulsant properties of CBN are being worked on as well. Researchers found out that a particular combination of CBN and CBD can be a decent pain reliever. Scientists still need to manufacture a CBN isolate to conduct proper research as a specific breed of a heavy CBN strain does not exist yet. This is one of the main hurdles for initiating further CBN-based investigations. In only two years, though, we've seen a massive breakthrough in developing CBD-rich strains, so maybe CBN-rich strains are around the corner. Many people want to be able to find a way to cultivate CBN-rich strains. Another idea is making a strain that's susceptible to converting THC to CBN more easily. With all that's been done in the last five years in regards to CBD research, I am confident someone will figure out a way to get past this hurdle. CBN might also work as a sleep aid. This research in particular is lacking, but current results have shown CBN's potential impacts on treating sleep disorders. The researchers have claimed CBN, based on limited research, is an effective sleep improving cannabinoid. A natural CBD sleep aid called Sleep by New Phase Blends actually uses CBN in addition to other cannabinoids like CBD and CBG. This revolutionary hemp-based sleep aid is taking over the U.S. by storm. While we can't legally tell you CBN is the culprit, we can tell you that when people use it, they go to sleep. It, can it comes in both gummy and CBD drop form, and these bottles last, last roughly a month depending on how often you use it. Overall, the research is somewhat weak, but it is moving in the right direction. CBN is a great cannabinoid, and it has the potential to help people get a better night's sleep. It can also be used as an appetite stimulant. Researchers have discovered, through an animal study, that CBN stimulated the appetite in rats. You can read the study yourself by clicking on the link in the blog, but there isn't much data to back this claim. In the future, I can only hope that more research is conducted in this area. Remember earlier when we spoke about how people believed CBN was responsible for the psychoactive effects? We know that THC can be an, ap an appetite stimulant, so hopefully we aren't mixing up CBN with THC in this regard. So let's wrap everything up. What's the difference between CBN and CBD? Both compounds share multiple similarities, but are completely different cannabinoids. Research has shown that both have the potential for numerous health benefits. Here's a quick recap on everything we just talked about. CBN is the result of THC that has degraded. It can degrade over time or via light exposure. CBN and CBD both are very similar on a molecular level. Both CBN and CBD seem to offer similar benefits. CBN is non-psychoactive, just like CBD. I'm personally hoping that more medical claims will be further substantiated with a legitimate, comprehensive study. Since CBD became legal, the number of studies on can cannabinoids have skyrocketed, and it's only a matter of time before we'll know more.